In this module, we'll be talking about information security and privacy in the RMF. So let's jump into the slide deck. This module covers information security and privacy in the RMF. OMB Circular A130 was recently revised. This revision of an earlier version of A130 integrates information security and privacy controls under one document that establishes a general policy for planning, budgeting, governance, acquisition, management that covers federal information, personnel, equipment, funds, information technology resources, and supporting infrastructure and services. Essentially, A130 provides a requirement for government systems to be developed following information security and privacy control requirements that is directly tied to funding of organizations. A130 addresses responsibilities for protecting federal information resources and managing PII, or personally identifiable information. It establishes requirements for information security programs and privacy programs. It emphasizes the need for both programs to collaborate on shared objectives, including developing a coordinated approach in managing security and privacy risks and comply with applicable requirements. OMB A130 requires that organizations use the RMF to manage privacy risks beyond those that are typically included under the confidentiality objective of the term information security. While many privacy risks relate to the unauthorized access or disclosure of PII, privacy risks may also result from other activities, including the creation, collection, use, retention of PII, the inadequate quality or integrity of PII, and the lack of appropriate notice, transparency, or participation. This comes from the 2016 version of A130. In this case, we don't just think about the confidentiality of the information. We also have to think about can individuals opt out of participating in certain activities with their information or is there appropriate notice given to individuals if their information is going to be used for something or if it's been inadvertently disclosed. These levels of transparency need to take place even though they're not necessarily directly tied to the confidentiality term defined in RMF. When we look at security and privacy collaboration, we can see that they're so closely related that it makes sense to put them under the same umbrella of the RMF. RMF execution requires collaboration between privacy and information security professionals. So on one side, we have information security. Information security programs are responsible for protecting information and information systems from a number of things, including unauthorized access, use, disclosure, disruption, modification, destruction, in order to provide confidentiality, integrity, and availability, or the CIA triad that we talk about all the time. Privacy programs, on the other hand, are responsible for ensuring compliance with applicable privacy requirements and for managing the risk to individuals associated with creation, collection, use, processing, dissemination, storage, maintenance, disclosure, and disposal of PII information. This is collectively referred to as processing of PII. And we can see highlighted in yellow are a number of things that are exactly the same on both sides. And as we read through these lists, we can see there are a number of things that are closely related. This is a shared responsibility. The organizations that process PII have a shared security and privacy responsibility. This requires the two programs collaborate on security controls when selecting, implementing, assessing, and monitoring the security controls that protect both information security and privacy. There are differences in the programs though. Protection of PII cannot be achieved solely by securing PII. Not all risk to PII comes from unauthorized access 
or disclosure. Some is beyond the scope of information security. For example, the lack of appropriate notice, transparency, and participation requirements are not normally covered in information security programs. Organizations' privacy programs also select, implement, assess, and monitor privacy controls. These steps often can be integrated with the RMF as the same way that we integrate security controls. Privacy controls. A privacy control is an administrative, technical, or physical safeguard employed within an agency to ensure compliance with applicable privacy requirements and to manage privacy risks, and that's from OMB A130. A safeguard or a countermeasure prescribed for an information system or an organization to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the system and its information. Uh, that's also defined by A130. Usage of the term controls. So controls, we have to be careful when we use controls in revision two of the RMF. We have two types of controls now. So a control satisfies both the security and privacy requirements. We can easily use the term control when the safeguard covers both information security and privacy. On the other hand, a security control only addresses a security requirement and a privacy control only addresses a privacy requirement. So it can be touchy when we talk about controls. We want to make sure we use the right term. So with revision two of RMF, we have to think about a control, something that covers both security and privacy. A security control only covers security, and a privacy control only covers privacy. There is an interplay between privacy and security. The risk management process described in the RMF is equally applicable to security and privacy programs. However, the risk that security and privacy programs are required to manage are overlapping in some areas, but not in others. So it's important to keep track of where there's overlap, and that way we can effectively manage both security and privacy controls at the same time. And when there, where there is no overlap, we need to make sure we address security and privacy independently. Consequently, it's important that organizations understand the interplay between privacy and security to promote effective collaboration between the privacy and security officials at every level of the organization. In closing, this topic covered the following items. Privacy and security concerns of OMB A130, collaboration between information security and privacy, shared responsibilities, differences in the information security and privacy programs, an overview of privacy controls, use of the term control, and privacy and information security interplay. If any of these topics don't seem familiar to you, please go back and look at them again, and we'll see you in the next module.